Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name is Tyler, and today I have some super exciting news for you guys. So if you're new here or if you just didn't know, I've spent the last five, six-ish months studying for the Certified Kubernetes Administrator. I took that test two days ago and got my results yesterday, and I am very happy to report that I was able to pass on my first try. So I wanted to hop on here and talk about my experience and maybe just provide some tips for anyone out there studying for it right now. I do want to preface that this video is not going to go over all of the study materials I used and why they were good or why they were bad. That actually is a separate video I will make because it will be very long. But let's get into it. So when I started studying for this exam, I had no idea about anything Kubernetes, Docker, like zero. I had heard the word, didn't really know what it did, didn't really know what containers were. Of course, I didn't know what like deployments or replica sets or any of that were. So I was really starting from ground zero. Another thing to note is I also didn't really have much Linux experience. I had just a super small amount. Like I knew how to navigate directories and edit text files, but very, very little Linux experience too. So that also is maybe why it took a little bit longer for me to pass it than most people, but I like to be very thorough with my studies. I don't want to try to get the certification as fast as I can. I'd rather do it at a pace I feel comfortable comfortable with and really make sure I am nailing down that information. So along with the shiny piece of paper, I actually can know what I'm talking about when people ask me about Kubernetes. So with that little tangent out of the way, let's go through it. So this exam like absolutely terrified me. Like the only exam I think I've been more nervous for was the CCNA because the CCNA was like my first like really big certification. Like of course, I have the Network Plus. I love the Network Plus, but just it didn't really have as much fear factor. So, yeah, it's a, at least for me, the CKA was pretty scary. And it's scary for a couple of reasons. So, if you guys didn't know, the CKA is all performance based. So, rather than having a set of multiple choice questions where you can guess and maybe get it right, the CKA, CKA actually asks you to like build something or fix something and you are sat in front of a, I think it's a VM and you have to actually go into the command line and navigate through the cluster and build what's required or fix what's required. So very different exam format that, than I was used to because I've never taken an exam like that. Like when I took the CCNA, it was at the point where they had removed labs or anything. So super nervous about that aspect. Another thing I was super nervous on was the um, the actual like getting logged into the test itself and all of that. Because once again, if you guys didn't know, you cannot take the certified Kubernetes administrator in an exam center. Like you can't go to a testing center where they hold your hand through the setup and they make sure it's working for you and you just get to go back and it's it's just there. No, you actually have to find a quiet place, find super reliable internet and get all of these things set up so you can do your remote tests. So like for me, I was too nervous to take my exam like down here, for example, because if my dog starts barking or something or somebody else is home and they start making a bunch of noise there goes my exam like they will just straight up cancel it there's no oh it was just it was just my um just my brother he was making noise upstairs it's no it's yeah good luck bye your your exam doesn't count so i went ahead and just took it at the office i work at another thing i did to be absolutely sure that I wouldn't have connectivity problems was I ran like a 70 foot long ethernet cable straight from the switch in the server room 
to the room that I was taking the test in and directly hardwired into my laptop because I was just that paranoid of the PSI bridge like failing or something just because I hear so many so many horror stories of that happening and people just having the worst latency or disconnects and really just making the exam harder than it needs to be with technical issues so I wanted to avoid that. Another thing I did to be absolutely sure that I wasn't going to have technical issues during the exam was I actually had a whole second laptop with me. So I'm actually recording on the laptop I took te the test on, but I actually had a backup laptop with me too that had very little software on it. It's effectively a fully clean wiped laptop just in case I needed it. So if you couldn't tell already, I was just a little bit nervous about taking the, the remote test or that aspect of taking the test. So I went ahead, got all my stuff set up before the exam, passed the system checks, and then they brought me into like the, the room scan and right before they actually drop you into the exam to make sure your environment is the way it should be. And guys, I almost had a freaking heart attack because we're going through this, this system check, right? And first of all, there was like a fan above my head in the ceiling that was making a little bit of noise. And they're like, they asked me what the noise was. And I was like, oh, there's no way. Am I going to have to find another place to take this exam in? And so that was a little worrisome, but they said it was okay. And then I'm doing my room scan. And the way I had it set up initially is I had my laptop and I had the screen shut off. So it was only projecting onto a monitor in front of my laptop screen. And I was just going to use my laptop's keyboard because I don't use mice or keyboards. I know it's weird. You guys can fight with me about it in the comments. But I was just going to have it set up like that, like trackpad, laptop, keyboard, and a monitor. And then the proctor says, he says, close your laptop lid. And this like threw me way off guard because I'm like, oh, wonderful. Like... I don't get to use the keyboard like I'm super used to because there was like a like a 60% keyboard or something in that room that I could have used, but it's a little bit different on the layout and I didn't want that to be a factor. So I was like, okay, well, this isn't great. And so I tell the, uh, the proctor, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go grab a keyboard and mouse because I actually put them outside of the room just because I figured they didn't want anything else in the room with me. So I go and grab him, turn him on, and he's like, close, oh, I already said that, but yeah, he's like, close your laptop lid. So I finally close my laptop lid, and I forgot to set the setting to not sleep when my laptop lid closes. So I close my laptop lid, and my computer goes straight to sleep, screen goes black, and I like, I, I can tell you, I basically had a heart attack. And... I was like, oh, great. Now I have to sign back in. Am I going to have two sessions? Did I just completely like ruin my, my like set it login process? So I flip it back open and I'm like, I'm so I'm like, I'm already over it at this point. I'm like, we are not going to mess with the monitor. I'm just going to take it on my laptop. And that's exactly what I did. Completely disconnected the monitor. I was just like, we're going just pure laptop mode. Wish me luck. And that actually, it worked out fine. I have a really big laptop screen, but it was a little bit nerve wracking because people say it's not a good idea to take it on just a laptop screen. And I kind of see why there's a lot of stuff on your page. And I would say if you have a laptop smaller than 17 inches, definitely go for an external monitor. Just remember to set your lid close settings so you can have your laptop closed and not shut down your computer. So yeah, that was the only real issue I had during the exam or I guess before the exam, but we got through it. I was able to get signed back in. Wasn't too big of a deal. They were super fast with getting me through all of the check-in processes. So good job PSI. And then once I was in the exam, like taking the exam, I 
again, was kind of nervous that there was going to be latency or disconnects because people say that they are. And I'm, I just assumed the people on the forums were correct. And I was like ready for like crashes and three second latency and things not working the way they should. But I actually had a, like a really great experience. I didn't have any disconnects. There was pretty much like zero latency. I mean, the, it, everything was wicked fast. The only time it slowed down just a little bit is when I was scrolling through the docs. Sometimes if I scrolled too fast, it would make it a little bit choppy, but really, really nothing major. So honestly, I had a really great testing experience. There was kind of a quirk where my copy and paste would just be a little bit funky sometimes. Like you would copy something or you'd go to copy something and it would just, it would like cut it or I didn't even think it copied it. It would just like delete the text. You can just do control Z and it will behave itself again. But little quirk there didn't prove to be a huge issue in my exam, but figured I'd mention it anyway. So yeah, I mean, as far as like PSI side of things, everything went pretty smoothly other than the whole closing my laptop lid thing. And then as far as the actual exam went, it went pretty smoothly. There were, there were a couple tricky questions. There were also questions that were like unbelievably easy. It was just a super simple, like one step problem. And I was kind of shocked when I ran into those. Cause I'm like, that's it. Am I misreading something? But no, it's kind of a good mix of some more complicated multi-step questions and some just easy questions. So always good on that. The strategy I took when going through the questions is I would go through them. And if one was taking me longer than about 10 minutes, or I think even less, basically, if I didn't know what to do almost immediately, I would do the question to the best of my ability and then move on because you do get partial credit. So I would go through and build what I knew how to build or fix what I knew how to fix. And if it wasn't perfect, I was like, whatever, I'll just keep on trucking and hope I have time to come back to it. And I actually did. I had like 30, I think almost 40 minutes left when I got to the end of the exam to go back through and start tinkering with some other questions. The questions aren't too tricky. So like if you've been going through Killer SH, nothing on the exam is harder or almost equally as hard as Killer SH. Like there are some overlaps. However, absolutely go through Killer SH until every question is pretty much second nature because it does a wonderful, wonderful job of giving you a feel of what the actual exam is like to navigate because they're effectively the same interface. So I highly recommend Killer SH. I think that's pretty much all I wanted to go over today. There will be another video posted probably tomorrow on what I actually used to study because it was complete overkill. Like if you guys know, I love to just go way over the top of studying. Like I think these are my cloud practitioner notes, which this is kind of excessive for the cloud practitioner. I took like 40 pages of notes on anything and everything that could possibly be in that test. So super excited to make that video. But as always, I appreciate y'all for watching. If you're new here and you want to follow me through my degree free journey in tech, of course, subscribe. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I am more than happy to answer them. I love talking to you guys. But with that being said, I will catch you guys later.